why did you get rid of the squid at the end of the Watchmen movie? <laughs> What's wrong you know, with you? You know, that's interesting. That, that's never come up before. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't no, seriously. Why did I? Um, no, was it your call or was it? I mean, if folks, a little backstory. Anybody ever read the Watchmen Alan Moore's classic book? Uh, yeah. uh, and Mr. Moore is notorious for he doesn't like adaptations of his work. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, uh, Watchmen, anything he's done. He just he likes the common form. So when you take this daunting task to adapt what they call unadaptable into a movie, first. How did you get these time? Let's back to what, what did you do? Did you go, oh my god, now what? We, uh, um, well, I wrote the movie X Men. And, uh. Did anybody I, see the X Men movie? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mine was Mine skipping it. Yeah, it no, I did that, and it was a big hit. And then my agents were like, okay, now you're the comic book movie guy. And so I said, well, if that's me, then I want to do the greatest comic book of all time. Uh, and they said, no, we can't do Watchmen, you know, you'll never get the rights and so on and so on. But I, I was like, don't tell me what I can't do, let's just yes. figure it out. And so we found the guy with the rights and, and uh, Larry Gordon, and we went to him, and I pitched it to him. I pitched it as a HBO miniseries. Oh, really? Yeah, like six-part miniseries. Uh, and I wanted the DVDs to look just like the books. Yeah, nice. Uh, but then Larry was like, look, I, I, I don't do TV, can you make it into a movie? I was like, well, I don't know. Uh, but we set it up at Universal, and um, so in terms of the squid, here are all the reasons that okay. it got changed. My contract with Universal, the first contract I signed for this was on September 10th, 2001. So the next day, uh, we had September 11th, yeah. and changed the whole world, and was essentially the ending of the Watchmen, uh, and at that point I thought, I can't have images of dead people in Times Square or they will never make the movie. And plus, it wouldn't feel right. Yeah. Uh, so immediately, um, that was needed to be different. Uh, the other issue with the squid was I was able to fit the whole thing into a two hour and 45 minute movie. Yeah. But with the squid, I would have had to explain you know, the island of artists, the, 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 the genetic development, the, the reasons why there was a psychic giant squid creature, all of that would have taken an extra half an hour. We, we did not have the time. Uh, and then it was Darren Aronofsky's friend, who was a physicist, who said, hey, what if Dr. Manhattan, spoiler alert, yeah. uh, was the source of the thing at the end? And I thought that that made a lot of sense. It was a lot cleaner. Um, it sort of felt like the sort of the perfect movie adaptation move. Uh, so we did that, and I, you know, and people are like, you know, weren't you worried about the fans? And I was like, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't worry about the fans. What I worry about is, I'm a fan, and do I love this? Do I think that this feels right to me? And, and so, um, so that's how it happened. So oh, if you miss it terribly, I, I, no, no, I love the squid. I love the squid. I think it's amazing. Um, but it just it just wouldn't fit. No, that was just an argument in comic book stores around the world because every Wednesday I'll get my books and when I mention you were coming, they go, ask me about the squid. Yes, I'm, like, yeah, right. I'm on my list, ask me about the squid too. Yes. Uh, hey, South Leo!